We are live. What's going on, everyone? This is Brandon with BiggerPockets.com. Beardy Brandon here on Instagram. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys about mindset, but specifically mindset about hiring people, about building your team. Because if there's one thing I've learned over the past few years is that like the difference between like, like, not growing and growing comes down more to your team than almost anything else. And so that's why today I'm going to be doing that. I'm actually going to be joined today by Jason Jerees, who is, uh, many of you guys know it, he's my performance coach. And uh, I'm going to see if I can add him in here. Yeah, so it's going to add him in here. And he's a wealth of information when it comes to mindset and the way we think and the way we process stuff and the way we take action or don't take action. So that's why Jason is going to be joining me today. What's up, Jason? Hey, man. And what was that quote you had about wealthy people and hiring? Uh, oh, the, 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 I'm not, what is that? I don't hire people because I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy because I hire people. Right? Yes. That yeah. one, that one. Yeah. yeah. Cause the, the, the back story of that was, uh, my parents are visiting right now. My dad made some funny comment about, you know, you have house cleaners or no, it's pool cleaner. You have a pool guy. Like, you know, why do you need that? And I wanted to be like, Dad, I, I don't hire them because I'm like successful and rich. I'm, you know, successful because I hire people to do those things that that way I can spend time doing more like dollar per hour, higher dollar per hour stuff. So that's where that came from. I like that. Yeah, that's fun, a great fun. quote. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 This is a great topic. Yeah, and I know you, you ran or you, you have an outsourcing company, right? You were at least associated with one, right? So you understand yeah, that I, power too. <laughs> absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I founded an outsourcing company in the Philippines. Um, we shut down yeah. last month. <laughs> Two, oh, I've started about six different companies, right? But you keep going, yep. right? Try this, try this, try this, right? Yep. Um, yeah. The topic, the, the, I get this question a lot, right? I get it a lot. Like, how do I build my team? And 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 working with you over the past couple of years, I think the thing that I've seen the most from a coaching perspective is, is your willingness to work with the team and let go. Right. Because that's and, and because that's one of the biggest challenges. We start working, we get our baby and, and like n- nobody could do it as good as me. Right. But then you become the bottleneck and stuff starts to stop. Right. Um, yeah. And that's how cool I used to, to be actually. For, well, for years, I mean, I didn't hire anybody for the first like five years of being a real estate investor. Like nobody. I didn't hire anybody. And then uh, slowly I started adding people in. And I made so many mistakes in that time about hiring people because I used to hire people based on like they have a heartbeat or they're around, or they're a Facebook yeah. friend of mine. So like, that's why I would naturally hire people, which is a terrible idea. But uh, anyway, I've learned a thing or two about hiring in the last year. So I thought we'd t- maybe just talk about that today a little bit. So uh, I don't know, where do you want to start with that? I think that's a good that? idea, right? Yeah, definitely. Where do you want to go? Well, I think, I'm taking a note here. I just had an idea. Okay, so the thing is, I've, I've talked to a lot of your fans with free sessions and things like that over the past couple months, and and the real and and I'm new to real estate investing, and and what I've been hearing is like a lot of people are always looking for strategies to get started in the real estate business or buy their first property or add their team or get to the next level, and and bigger pockets and yourself does an amazing job of sharing mindset strategies as best you can, right? So you get a lot of people modeling or attempting to model you right and 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 it's very easy to model strategies right what did it bring when what did you do to get your first property well i did this i ran a calculator i did this i made an x number of offers and you're here's my calculator and here's my formula but even though you give all of that to someone else they may not be able to execute because there may be a mindset perspective right so if you want to model somebody in addition to the strategies, you should try to model the mindset. Model the mindset. So today, what I think we should do today is I think we should pick apart Brandon's brain to see what's in there so that you can, those listening can start to see how Brandon views things differently. Because think about it this way, right? So to get an, a result, you need to execute an action, right? You need to execute some action. The action you execute is based on who you are. Right. Like if you like if, if I tried to get a real estate business, I've never done a real estate deal or barely read any investing. I know the basics. If I tried to do real estate investment, it would take me this. If we had a machine that put Brandon's brain in Jason's body, even with my Jason's resources, 
Brandon would get a property much faster than Jason would, right? Because it's a different level of thinking and it's based on what you believe, what you think, what you perceive. So let's go through kind of your journey of your team expanding and, and really what you believed and what you learned and what you shared because that's where I think people listening will start to get the greatest passive mindset shift. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, let's start here. We'll start at the very beginning. So when I first got into real estate, I did everything myself, meaning I did the work myself. I did the construction. I flipped houses. I was there every day for the first few years because, and it's funny, I was actually talking with a couple of guys yesterday and they said the same thing to me. They said, well, yeah, right now I do all my own work because it's cheaper that way and I save a lot of money, but I don't always want to be doing that. And I said, hold on. I said, let's go back and look at the language. Like you just said, so like his belief, and it's not wrong because I mean, it's not, not necessarily wrong from a surface level that it's cheaper to do my own work. Yes, you could pay $50 an hour for a plumber to do the work or you could do it yourself for free. Therefore, it is technically at the moment cheaper. But then I, like later on in the conversation, and we talked about that for a while, later on, he mentioned some idea for like lead acquisition, uh, like for getting deals sent to him that would require like text messaging or something like that. It was like a cool complex strategy. And I was like, that is awesome. Yeah. That, if you just fully implemented yeah. that, that is a whole lot more valuable than plumbing. And I said, the problem is you don't have time to implement a text message lead system because you're busy fixing a pipe. And he laughed and he's like, he, he got it right then. He got it. And that's where I was when I started is I was doing everything myself because it was yeah. cheaper. So that was, uh, that was, was first, cheaper. that was mindset and, 1.0, we'll call it. So, and, and, and what do you believe like now about doing your work yourself versus someone else? <laughs> like I put everything at kind of a dollar per hour. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, and I, I really learned this heavily from that book, 80, 20 sales and marketing by Perry Marshall. It was a huge influence on me. I read it like four years ago. And he made a comment that everything we do in life has a dollar per hour attached to it. So by you doing that, then that is a dollar per hour. So by me mowing the lawn, that is a $20 an hour task. Cause I could pay somebody $20 an hour to mow my lawn. Mm -hmm. And, but by creating a text message lead system that automatically pipes in deals, that's like a $10,000 an hour job. Like if you think about how much money profit you would make over the life of your, your investments, if you had that system running, it took you 10 hours to do it and you ended up making a hundred grand over the life of your investments, like that's $10,000 an hour. So everything attaches to that. So today I look at that and I say, everything I do, is this the highest and best use of my time? And it's not always about dollar either. I mean, I my time with Wilder, my little boy, or with Rosie or with my wife, what dollar per hour is that? There is none. But I can guarantee you it's more than $20 an hour. So I would rather hang out with them than mow my lawn. Yeah. So that's where I'm. Oops. Okay, so so that that one's easy, right? We knew I I I knew there was gonna be a dollar per hour there. Sorry, I lost you there. Okay. My I knew my there was phone a beeped on me. Okay. No problem. So thanks. Thanks. I, I was expecting the dollar per hour one and absolutely, right? So what's, you know, figure out for those listening what your dollar per hour rate is making money, even if you have a job, right? Anything less, don't do. But here's my other question. When you started to allow other resources in, what other belief or perspective shifted besides the dollar per hour? Like, was there willingness to accept help? or thinking you were okay or you deserved it or you were big enough to have help or anything like, like what else shifted as you started to move into leverage? I mean, so this is something I continually struggle with even today, uh, but I'm way better at it. Is that like, are you too good to do your own work? Like there's like a, there's a, there's a mindset blocking there. I mean, I had a friend in high school I used to laugh at like, you know, internally because he, his parents hired house cleaners and I thought they were too good to do their own cleaning. And uh, today, that I've, obviously I have house, I have people who clean my house every other week and I have landscapers and pool guy. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so I don't really feel that way, but sometimes I still do a little bit. Like, I, am I too good? Am I too like prissy or too whatever? Like my nails are too nice to be able to go get my hands dirty. So there was overcoming that. And like the comments from the parents and others that are like, you know, you got yourself a pool guy. So, I mean, that was a big one was overcoming just like, is it okay for me not to do my own work? Is it okay for me to be in charge and to be the manager, yeah. to be the leader? Uh, so that, that was, a, that was I like, guess, tough. It still is tough to get over sometimes. And I don't, uh, I don't know, just we're raised so that what way. Do you so what do, you what, do you, what do you believe about people working for you well, to, Today, here's what like, I tell what's myself. What's the conscious focus? Yeah, and this is what I focus on, is that when I hire the people, one, I'm providing a living for them. So like, this is actually a really, like a good, 
Like every time I hire somebody, yes. not only am I not doing the thing, but I'm improving the economy in both the world and their own personal life. So now they can put food on the table for their family yeah. and, and provide for more. So if we all just said, we're not going to hire people, like we'd all just be broke and everyone would be broke because everyone wants, you know, like, we depend on other people. So I would rather be a leader who hires mm -hmm. other people and helps them personally grow uh, whether it's financially or in other ways than yeah. hoarding it all myself. So it's not just a selfish thing. In fact, it's actually more selfish to want to do everything yourself rather than getting to that next level to be able to hire other people. Good point, right? Cause you're creating jobs, yes. right? Yeah. So that's a, uh, yeah, that was big. The other mindset was I just can't afford it. I had that early on too. Like I can't afford to hire people. And that what's funny is I say, and some people are laughing. They're saying that's not a mindset thing. That's a bank account issue. But it's not, right? It's like, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, yes, I'm not saying every person here needs to go out and hire somebody right now full time. That would be mm -hmm. probably, may, I may, maybe they could. Uh, but it takes a little time to get to that level, maybe. But I, like, the, the way I started, I think it's a pretty good way to do it. I hired my mother in law for five hours a week to answer phone calls. It was one task that I yeah. deemed as a thing yeah. I hate doing. I had no energy doing it, it drained me. And therefore, I just didn't get it done very well. I wouldn't call tenants back very well. I would fill units a lot slower. So I hired her to answer phone calls yeah. and it was a few hundred bucks a month. And that little shift like, got me to see, oh wow, I started making a lot more money. I started enjoying what I'm doing more and I had energy to devote towards the things that make me more like finding deals because I was no longer showing tenants you know, rental properties and like shifting just a yeah. little tiny bits to people around you or to uh, like virtual assistants or to whatever uh, definitely frees up more time for the things that matter. Mm -hmm. So that was another one. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So so first there was like, I'm gonna hire a resource, right? That was step one, right? I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna hire a resource, right? Then you then the second part was okay, I'm gonna find one, right? Yes. I'm gonna and then you started like who was the who was the first person you actually now you got mom, but like yeah. where were you at? Like what was the shift that happened for you to bring the first full resource onto your team? The first full one was actually like Who was that? Was that an assistant? Yeah, it was an assistant. And I don't I don't want to say it was a mistake, but it was definitely the wrong hire. Um like she was awesome. I thought she was an awesome person. Uh but she was not fitted for the role that I hired her for. It was she had a pulse and she applied and I knew her and I liked her and I was like, oh, "I'll hire her cuz that'd be fun to work with her." Um she was a woman like who was at my church and I thought she'd be great and then I found out like right away that she just wasn't right for the role. That said, it still helped me. I mean, she would yeah. watch. She would watch Rosie when she was first born. She would do our dishes sometimes. Like we found a spot yeah. for her. Yeah, it was still helpful. But yeah, that was the first hire. And then I learned. I guess what I've learned about hiring is like, like all my successful hires now. Uh, all my really successful hires have actually been people that I've like brought up from within after seeing how they work. Cause you never really know how somebody's going to be until you work with them. Mm -hmm. And so like guys like working yeah. with Ryan Murdoch or Mike Williams now, or, or Walker or all these guys that are on my team. Now it came from like seeing how they work. Cole, who's he actually got like, check this out. I mean, so this is Cole. Yeah. What's up? So Cole is actually my video guy now. So I actually <laughs> hire hey, Cole to nice. come over once a week and work nice. video stuff with me because he can run that camera right there. And the video we just recorded for the fun that we're launching today. And so he can do all that. Yeah. So again, I don't have to struggle through all that. So yeah, I found all these people now, but I yeah. work a little so bit, you, little so bit, you, little bit and see how they do. So that was in your immediate circle, yes. right? In your community. It was, it was already in there, right? It wasn't something you had to go find. It, you actually just had to look yeah. and you found something right there to help yeah, you. Yeah, I, right? I think... Awesome. Yeah, I think some people naturally want to like go put out a job application and like get a bunch of like the old fashioned way. But for me, it just it's worked out better, like just being involved in the big real estate space and being involved in bigger yeah. pockets and, ha you know, talking to people constantly. We even kind of started like a, a lead. I mean, let's say about Mike real quick. So Mike is my uh, head of investor relations. So he runs all investor relations yeah. with Open Door Capital Fund. Mm -hmm. Mike came because we opened up a, uh, I don't know how an internship because it wasn't really an internship. It was just like a team of people to help me find deals and analyze deals. We found, we built a, a team of people that could just help. And Mike ended up just being like a leader of that team. Like he was the one coordinating calls yeah. and getting people together. And he proved himself as a leader that was super capable. And so then we brought him on full time and now he's, you know, full time running like huge yeah. chunks of the business. So yeah, that was huge. So, so being a leader, even if someone isn't at your level, if they're still acting like a leader, they're going to attract people. Yeah. There's going to be people in their community. Yeah, because right? then he attracts people I have a question him here. constantly. Yeah, and then brought exactly, them into my right? world. Exactly, so right? I, 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 I have a question here about like that first assistant yeah. that you hired that didn't work out. 
Did you have any doubt that you could find one that worked? <laughs> I had a ton of doubt. Like, I mean, like, I, I should say, like, I, I have this big fear that I, like, was going to hire the wrong person, which I probably did. Uh, I had a fear that I was going to hire, mm-hmm. that I couldn't afford it, that I wouldn't have enough work for them to do. Uh, that just, it wouldn't work out and I'd yeah. be letting them down. They left their last job to come work for me. In fact, uh, not like 30 minutes ago, actually, I didn't tell you this yet. Remember we talked about, um, hiring Micah. So we went back and forth the weekend, 30 minutes yeah. ago, yeah. he finally, yeah. like we accepted and now I have a new person on my team. So there's always that fear. Like, I guess for me, like, is it the wrong person? <laughs> so anyway, but now I'm, yeah, we're up to seven people now, I think as of but, 30 minutes ago. But under, well, well, there's the fear, right? Because you're yeah. a risk averse person, right? Yes. <laughs> but refer back to disc profile, right? Um, but underneath that, there's another belief there. Like there's yeah. a belief that yeah, it may work, but there's a there's a decision, but there's also a belief that's driving it forward. What's that belief? Mm. Uh, a good or bad way? I mean, are you thinking of a, like a positive or a negative? Well, positive, belief? right? Like like both. as if it, if it, if it, if it, if it was too strong in a negative way, you wouldn't have taken the action. You took the, because there was a decision that says, I'm going to add resources yeah. and you're going to try this one. The, the, but there had to be some belief there like, well, eventually I'll figure it out or I know I'll find yeah. it. I know there's a way if I'm committed or something like that. That's what I'm, I'm looking yeah. for something like that. Yeah, I guess the way, I, I, I guess if, if I kind of look deep, but like I have the belief that like the right person will generate significantly more than they cost. So, and there are opportunities everywhere. Like I'm an abundance mentality kind of guy. So I just know that there are, there's just an abundance um, of, mm-hmm. of resources. So if I have a person on my team, they will generate way more than I could ever, it would ever cost me to have them or anything like that. So I, I guess that's where I would go with that is like the belief that it, it's going to work out and I'm going to be way more successful because yeah. of this than I would without of it, without it. And even if I hire the wrong person, it's it's yeah. reversible. Everything's reversible. I don't say I'm going to go fire someone necessarily, but either we shift roles or we find them a better spot on the bus or whatever. But there are ways. It's all reversible. It's all fixable. And nothing's like going, you know, nothing's yeah. going to bankrupt me. So, Yes. Yeah, that's right there, right? So, so there's... But one other I want to ask, and then I want to summarize this real quick for everybody. So you said, sure. like, what's the belief? And you said the right person will generate significantly more than they cost. So yeah. there is a, a known fact that you're operating from that if you find the right person, it's going to bring value to your business. There's not a, there's not a question there. It's, it's a certainty. And what do you believe about finding the right person? Um, what do I believe about finding the right person? Good question. It's a deep question. Uh, I guess I believe, and I don't know if you're looking for something specific, specific here, but I believe that one, the the right person exists currently, but more so I, as a leader can develop almost anybody to be the right person. And maybe that's just my optimism of saying like, I could take anybody, but I actually believe like that if somebody is not good at their job, it's because I haven't trained them good enough or expressed it good enough. Like that if somebody's working for me, I, I try to take extreme ownership of that. And so like, I guess it's on me is where I'd go with that is like, like, if they're not perfect, I can make them more perfect. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, no, this is gold right here. This is like, if we start to understand why Brandon Turner is successful at building a team, these are the clues right here. Because the the model of the world, the filter that you're going into the process is, you know, the right person is there. Yeah. Which basically means I need to create them or find them if yeah. we dug deeper there. If anything happens, everything is reversible. Yep. And the right person will generate more than they cost. Yes. Right? If you so if 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 you're watching this and you don't believe those things, now you're starting like you should write those down, right? And start to think that way because that's the that's the model of the world that Brandon developed, not because he was in coaching for 15 years, for, but from working his butt off for for six to eight years behind the scene that got this point here. Right? Well, let me add one more. Let me add one more. And it's funny to that. Yeah. yeah. You can go go finish your thought, and then I'm gonna add one more mindset thought. But go ahead. Um, but no, no, I lost it. Go ahead. All right. All right. Here's how I'm going to go with that. The rest of that. No, come back. (laughs) Sorry. Killed it. There's also this idea that 
I don't know. Okay, so Bigger Pockets um, has private equity, uh, private equity firm that owns a good chunk of Bigger Pockets. Uh, happened a couple of years ago. Josh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, Josh sold off part of Bigger Pockets and brought in these partners. They're awesome. And what they brought to the table was a different way of thinking about business. This is why it's so valuable to like attach yourself with mentors and people who have been there before because they have a different way of thinking. So the very first meeting we ever had with this company, they sat down and they said, "Okay, well, you know, what's your guys' plan?" And we said, "Okay, we've got this many developers." We've We've got this many people. We've got this marketing guy. We think we can build this and we're going to do that this year. And they said, stop, stop. And they said, don't tell us what you have and what you can do with what you have. Tell us what's possible and what you need to make that come true. And so that was like the final like mindset shift that I went through about a year ago, maybe six months ago, where I said like that blew my mind because I thought, okay, if the if what's possible is for me to own a thousand rental units in the next three years, that was a vision I casted. I said I want a thousand rental units in three years. Yeah. What's it gonna take to get there? Not what do I have today? What are my current resources in my life? But what would it take? Yeah. Man, I would need a full time asset manager, a full time property manager. I would need the investor relations person. I would need an assistant. I would need this and this, and I like define that. And of course, I don't have the money necessarily yeah. to pay for that. But guess what? When you buy big real estate deals, you get acquisition fees and you get other like sources of income along the way and they produce income the properties do. And so then I could work backwards and say, okay, well, in order to afford that team, I would need to buy 25 to $30 million of real estate every year. But if I had that team, buying 25 to $30 million of real estate every year would be would be simple. Like, because I'd have a rock star team that could yeah. do it. Yeah. And therefore, I'm not paying for all those salaries the properties are. And so it's just a different way of looking at it saying like, yeah. again, it's not coming out of my pocket. Like how am I going to be able to buy a thousand units? It was the, like, if I had the right team, they would pay for themselves by doing that. And so that's what I did. We've hired seven people or six, six, seven people now in the past six months. So. Yeah. So, so when you're looking at that additional expense, you're not looking at your bank account asking yourself, how do I pay for it? Correct. Yeah. Right. You're looking at that expense and the growth and saying, how can I pay for it? Yes. Which is very different than the way that most people think, right? That's a Robert Kiyosaki It question, is, yeah. It's right? the, it's, how can yeah, I pay Yeah, poor people, it, right? yeah, the poor say I can't afford it. The rich ask, how do I afford it? Yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Like, tell me, somebody would come for me and they say, I want to stand up for coaching. I'm like, here's the price. Like, they don't have that. Like, well, you may not now, but do you want it? Go get it, right? Yeah. And, and that's part of the thing that a lot of people don't see behind the scenes is like this, this, this lonely internal battle struggle for greatness where you're all alone working by yourself over your fears and growing and expanding, right? Because I'm sure there were fears when you had your first property and I'm sure there were fears when you took your first dive and you're hit and you lost a bunch of money, you know? Um, what has been like, what, what, what kind of writes you back forward when you get hit? Like, what do you go back to when you, when something like topples you or you get run over or you hit a big hit and you don't have anybody to talk to? Sorry. Okay. When I you, got this, when you I got this hit, timer on my phone that every 15 minutes it, it uh, pauses me and said, you've been on Instagram for too long. That's why it keeps breaking out. All right. Ask that question again. <laughs> what, what do I do when I get hit? Is that what you said? So, so, okay. So when, no, wait, when you get a hit. And it's and it's and it's about and, and when you're you're pushing the edge, when you're growth, when you're in your passion, you're going to that next level, and you take a hit, and you're the people around you, you can't really talk to about it. Yeah. Right. What do you? What, what is your foundation that gets you grounded to move forward there? Mm, good question. A couple of things that I do. Uh, one, obviously, talking with you helps an awful lot. Like having a <laughs> having a performance coach helps. Uh, yeah, that's been actually like super helpful. Uh, but also talking with like, I like to also talk with like super experienced real estate investors. Uh, like for example, there's a buddy named buddy of mine named Brian Burke, who is a real estate investor. He's been on the, our podcast a number of times. He's here in Maui right now. And like, I'm getting together with him. Like he doesn't know that yet, but I'm getting together with him in the next few days. Cause like, I need to just sit down and be like, here's what's, you know, here's what's going on. Here's where we're at. What can I do better? You know, like here's what's been awesome. And here's what we've been struggling with. And uh, mm. so anyway, those two things have been super, super helpful. Um, going back to the basics of like, the lead measures, like what can I control? What can I control? Like, you know, I got the journal, you know, you've, I, we talk about this a lot, but like I ground myself every yeah. morning by like doing my yeah. morning, like intention journal stuff where I'm like, this is what, um, this is what my goals are. Here's my lead measures. If I stick with this belief, I know that the outcome is going to come even with the ups and downs. So that's kind of how I look at that. Okay. Okay. Well, 
What about in the earlier days when you didn't have all those accesses, when you didn't have access to the high level real estate mentors that you could bounce off of or you couldn't access a performance coach? Like, what did you come back to to keep moving forward when you took a hit? Or maybe when you took your first loss or was something yeah. like that. What, what, what was the thought or belief there that kept you going? I mean, I, I have always firmly believed that a like real estate works. Like I just know it does. There's too many examples of it working millions and millions of people who have become very, very wealthy yeah. off real estate. I just know in my heart and in my soul that it works and it will work yeah. even when an individual deal doesn't work. So I, I always know that. Um, I also, I read a lot and I've always fallen back on books whenever I feel like when the things don't go right, I'll go read a really good, like I'll reread Rich Dad Poor Dad or I'll read Four Hour Work Week or I'll read mm -hmm. one of those books and I'm just like, it fires me up again. I'm like, oh yeah, this, this does work. This is how it does. And uh, anyway, that's always been huge for me is, is when, when things are hard is to go back to that. Now, I didn't listen to a lot of podcasts starting out, but I think today, if I was in this, if, if I was a newbie today, I would go back and listen to some of my favorite like podcast episodes. Cause I'd be like, oh yeah, that guy's story where yeah. she was a single mom living in Detroit and she bought, you know, 12 properties cash her first yeah. four years while working a full-time job. Like, yeah, like if she can do that, I can do that. <laughs> like I go back and listen to those. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's, that's like, that's gold there. So, um, and then, so let's go back to team for a second because sure. I'm a low S and that's why we're bouncing all that's over. Okay. So, um, so we go, I'm going to hire a team, yes. right? Team didn't work out. What about when team is getting bigger than I imagined really quick? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, like what, how do you continually stay in growth mode as you get pushed to where you're uncomfortable? Yeah, how do you continually stay in growth mode? Um, well, that there's that because because yeah. one, one, let me jump in because I'll say from knowing you from a coaching perspective, you are always in growth mode, and your discomfort doesn't stop you. Yeah, is, is based on what I've seen. Why does discomfort not stop you? There's a quote I tell myself all the time. I don't know where I first heard it, but it's a popular phrase: "Feel the fear and do it anyway." Uh, I'm such a big believer in that concept of like, this freaks me out. I guess I'm doing it anyway. Like I went to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, for like the, I went the first time I watched, it was terrifying. Second time I went there to participate and I drove by <laughs> and then I drove by again and I drove by again. I didn't want to get out of the car, uh, but I still, I still, uh, yeah, I still did it. Like I was terrified and I didn't know anybody there and it was incredibly awkward, but I still did it. Because like, I'm, I don't know. I don't know where that Why? comes from, but like, I just Why? feel the Why? fear. Why? I'm like, I'm scared, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know. I never really thought about that, but like, why would I do it anyway? I just, I know that like success comes yeah. from those things. And I just, again, kind of like how I know real estate works. I know that like every great thing is on the other side of fear. And so I just internally believe that like, it's not just a phrase on my wall or on a picture at the, you know, motivational quote. It's like, I really believe that like, Every single thing in life that I've ever got that's been good was a result of mm -hmm. being terrified first, like asking out my wife four <laughs> times and it took four times before she finally agreed to date me. And like, had I given up, I wouldn't yeah. be here today. Uh, when we tried to, to have Rosie, yeah. like it took us 10 years to get pregnant. Like, you know, it, it those yeah. things take work and effort and, you know, trying to figure this stuff out. It's, it's all good things are on the other side of that fear. So. I guess I just know that. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. So let me recap, right? So so building, expanding the team. Number one, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Number two, if it doesn't work, the right person is out there. And if I haven't found the right person, I haven't found them or developed them. And if it doesn't work out, everything's reversible. Yep. And if the right person is there, they're gonna generate significantly more than they cost. Yes. And when you look for pay on how to pay for additional resources, you don't look at the money you have, you look at what's what that opportunity is gonna create to pay for it. Yes. And at yeah. the end of the day, success comes from moving forward when it's scary, even when your knees are shaking. Because but because that's where growth is. And now, how often do you do you feel scared in business anymore? Yeah. When was the last time you felt scared in business? Uh, every day. <laughs> no, uh, 
<laughs> not like scared, scared. I mean, when I, when I, when I like, you, I mean, you were along for this the last six months, like the first offer we made on, I mean, we bought a real estate deal, a mobile home park. My first one was a million dollars. That was a big deal. And then we put an offer yeah. for a $2.7 million one and got it accepted. And then like we put an offer, another one, it was like 4 million. And then it was like 7 million. And then it was 20 million. And it was like, whoa, like that, like <laughs> when I'm signing papers that it's like, tw we'll pay $20 million for this portfolio. Like that's yeah. a little like, I, I don't even know what to call it. It's scary. Like I'm not like shaking, but like, whoa, this is real now. Like this is like, I got my big boy pants on now. And that was, uh. Yeah, those always scare me a little bit uh, in, in business. I suppose that was the last time I was like, for, like really like, like oh my gosh, like this is twenty million dollars, and uh, yeah, yeah. And at the core of that, you believe and know that real estate works. Yeah, and it, you just right? you stick real to that. Works. Yeah, uh, my my cousin Mike. What's up, Mike Borley? He said Brandon's fearless. No, like that's the funny. Like I'm so afraid of that stuff a lot. Um, but I think fear is kind of like difficulty. I always say that nothing's difficult. It's just steps that you haven't defined or practiced enough. And so fear is kind of the same way. Like nothing's scary. It just means you don't know what it is or you haven't practiced it enough. Like I'm not scared to drive a car anymore because I know how to do it and I've driven enough. The first time you drive, you're scared though because you haven't done it and you don't know the steps. Uh, so I guess like anytime I'm afraid, which is usually when it's something I haven't done or haven't done enough, it's one of the two like going to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or buying a mobile home park for $20 million or hiring a new employee. Like I, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, like it might sound like I've got a lot of this stuff figured out and together, but like you and I have been talking about Micah, like this guy that I just offered on today and he's just accepted. How long have we been talking about Micah? Like three months now? Like a, a, yeah, while. a, while. a while. It took a while. months for me to get to the point where I felt like, okay, I, I let's put the offer out there. And then like, let's make this happen. Like it took a long time of, and I think a lot of that is probably still fear as much as I want to sound like I'm over that. And like, I'm feeling the fear and doing it anyway. It yeah. wasn't an overnight thing. It was like, do I have the money to pay another person? Cause it's not a sales role. It's not a job that's necessarily going to pay for itself. But this goes back to one more, one more point is that not necessarily mm -hmm. that an employee is going to pay for themselves. Cause like there's a good chance that Micah will not pay for himself. I'm having to be, be an assistant and bookkeeper, but he will allow me to pay for himself and 10 times over, right? So if I'm not doing the books anymore yeah. of, of Open Door Capital, or if I'm not doing driving for dollars, because he is, that allows me to do things that will actually yeah. let me earn more money than what it costs him. And at the same time, let me focus on the things I like doing versus the things that I have to do. So yeah. that's a, just one more piece there is knowing that like every person I hire, as long as yeah. they're- and you, yeah. 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 Although you would have preferred to talk about Micah for another three months. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I just, Maybe. uh, there's this that's, great, that's actually, that's disc profile right there. That's, yeah. that's a high S disc profile. There's this great, it is. Yeah. It, I'm so for those of you, yeah. go ahead, explain a high S real quick. Cause that's high S, yeah. smooth, high S, smooth, high S. So, so if you want to know high S disc profile, we did one of these like a month ago, they'll look on my wall. You can see it. Brandon's a high S disc profile. High S's don't like risk and they move slow. They yeah. do. Yep. So, he but actually moves fast for a high S. This is how I've overcome that though. And there's a great analogy this guy uses. Uh, his name was Bryce Stewart on the Bigger Pockets podcast. We interviewed him like a couple years ago. And he gave this great story. I still remember today. He said, you know what? I had to, he's like, I had to sell my truck. I had no idea how to sell my truck. I just don't know how to do it. Like, there's a lot of steps. Yeah. He's like, but you know what I know how to do? I know how to vacuum my truck. And I know that in order to sell a truck, it has to be vacuumed. So I went out there and I vacuumed my truck. And he's like, then once the truck was vacuumed, I didn't know how to sell my truck, but I knew how to take a picture of my truck. So I pulled my cell phone out and I took a picture of it. And I might not know how to do this, but I know how to post a picture on Craigslist. So like, he's like, and his point was like, anytime you feel stuck, yeah. go yeah. vacuum your truck. And in like the intention journal, and this is meant to be a <laughs> plug for it, but like I always talk about your mins, your most important next step. You don't know a mile down the road when you're driving on a foggy road, you can't see a mile down the road, but you do know 10 feet in front of your car. You can see that far. So vacuum your truck, drive that 10 mm. feet, like take that little step. So that's why like, that's how I overcome, even though I'm a high S and I don't like risk and I don't like um, making decisions. I just, mm. every single day, I try to drive it forward 10 more feet through the fog because the only thing that's gonna stop me is if I pull over to the side of the road or if I refuse to vacuum the truck. So anyway, that's how I overcome the tendency to let fear wanna slow me down is by constantly saying, well, what little thing can I do next? That's what I want to do. And that's what I do. 
So start by taking step one. Yes, exactly. Right. You start summarize that much more succinctly. Step one. Yeah. Okay. Step one. So, so that's the formula. So I hope you listening, those of you listening, see this model here on how to think and operate like Brandon would. It, and with somebody to avoid risk, be as successful as you can and keep moving forward. This is awesome. This is golden. Oh, good. Well, thanks. Do you want to take some questions? See if anybody wants to ask you questions or anything? Or? Yeah, let's do some question answer. I just got a text from a buddy who said he's bringing tacos over in a few minutes. So I'm going to leave for tacos in a little bit. But let's do some oh, questions. Wow. Yeah, free tacos. I'll I take that tacos. all day. I know. Does so anybody have a question from Rick? <laughs> <laughs> I see a hand waving and I see some thumbs up. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Wait, did you have anything else to say before I cut you? Did you have anything else to say before I cut you off because I'm a high D? No, you are high D, but no, I'm good. <laughs> Whoosh. High D. Yeah, no. The, just that, like, I hope people I understand. Like, Jason and I, you guys, Jason and I talked about this the other day about on one of our coaching calls about how, like, like, really success comes down so much more to mindset. So we actually want to do a series of these conversations uh, about mindset in different ways. So today we're talking mindset with building a team, but next time we'll do mindset with something else to try to, like, help people see, like, it's again, it's not about, I can tell you exactly how to buy a rental property, but that's not going to get you a rental property. I can just like, I can tell you how to get a six pack. How many of us have six packs? Not many. I can teach you all day long how to do it. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike Bordley. Yes. Why weren't you this successful when you were growing up? <laughs> Mike's like the one guy here that knows me when I was growing up. No, I was not successful growing up. You know, I had some, <laughs> I was kind of nerdy in high school. Um, Let's see. What would you look for when searching for a real estate lawyer? I would recommendations, recommendations, recommendations. Uh, should you use an LLC on every property? Probably not until you're successful. But I'm not a CPA, so I'm not telling you that. From dusk till dog. What's up, guys? Mindset is so important. If you guys need dog training, by the way, from dusk to dog is in. Uh, till, from dusk till dog is. Cool. Uh, I actually hired them as a dog coaching people once because I had dog issues and they helped cool. me a ton. Anyway. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, what else we got here? Ooh, what is the key difference between coaching and mastermind? You want to take that one? What are your thoughts on the difference? Well, um, you, um, yeah, I can. Let's see. I'll give you my perspective. Sure. Yours. Coaching. If we, if we look at, if we look at success, right? The two mechanics of success is mindset and strategy. Okay. Mindset is the level of thinking you're operating from, yep. what you see, what you do. Strategy is the actions you take. Masterminding is more often than not goes into the strategy space. Yep. Because because you're it's, it, masterminding is mentoring. Mentoring is is by definition usually strategy. Because if you're if you're asking Brandon a question and you're a new real estate investor, he's a mentor who has a result that you want and will give you the strategies that he wants. But he may not be necessarily be able to help you shift your mindset to the point where you can run the strategy. Right. Um, coaching is at least my perspective. Coaching from my old I'm a Tony Robbins guys where I started is really about mindset transformation. It's 80% of success is mindset. You shift the mindset, then the strategy shows up automatically. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna answer the question a, a little bit different way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand. Ooh. Apparently, we hit another 15-minute mark. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> to expand the question a little bit because I think this will make actually a good just video in the future as well. I'm actually recording this, so maybe I'll put this out on uh, YouTube or something. But I want to talk real quick about the like different people you could hire or different ways you could uh, improve your mindset. We'll say that. Like five different strategies for improving your mindset. That's what we'll call this. Uh, so there's like five <laughs> layers, and or uh, I don't know which one comes first or whatever, but here's what they are. Number one, you could have a personal mentor. So when I first got started, Kyle was my personal mentor. His name was Kyle. He was a local landlord. He helped me learn a ton of stuff and he was free. I mean, maybe I pay for his coffee once in a while, but he was a friend. That's a great thing to have a personal mentor. Now, did, did Kyle know everything? No. So I learned all of Kyle's good and bad traits. One of the reasons I kept doing my own work for years is because he did all his own work. So a personal local personal mentor is a great person to have, but there are limitations. The benefit is it's usually free and they understand the local market. Uh, number two would be like a paid mentor. And this oftentimes is like a paid coach. In the real estate world, there's a million of these guys and they sometimes charge 20, 30, $50,000 for their paid coaching. Now, maybe you can get one cheaper for a thousand or 2,000. They're all over the place. But a paid coach is generally somebody who is a real estate investor and teaches you real estate tactics. Like here's how to buy a house. Here's how to do this. Now, I generally advise against paid coaches uh, in that regard only because 
I don't think it's tactics that people need. I think tactics you can learn from a book or you can learn from a lot of different areas from reading a blog post, listen to a podcast. So I generally don't push tactics. Um, Third would be a performance coach. This is where I actually drive most people as a performance coach is somebody like you, Jason, who doesn't necessarily show the tactics, but shows the mindset, the, the strategy behind the tactics. Cause I think that's more important and they're generally not 50 or a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, Jason, you're definitely not that. And so I actually push a lot of people to talk. Like in fact, I push people all the time. I'm like, look in your, at your level, you're earning, let's say the average person listening to me is earning a hundred thousand dollars a year at a job. And they're flipping a couple houses a year. Let's say at that level, if you had somebody you're talking to every week or every other week that's holding you accountable and drilling into your mindset, are you not going to improve your sales and your business and your family life by 5% a year to cover the cost of coaching? Like every single person I know pretty much is like hands down going to like going to benefit from that. So that's why I'm a huge fan of performance coaching. Fourth, is like a mastermind group. And so uh, that, the question was about mastermind. I'm gonna go with mastermind group where it's like a group of people that are holding each other accountable. Now this is similar because it's a lot of mindset stuff, but it's also a lot of the kind of you get from a coach. Now the benefits of course is that a mastermind group is usually free. Now there are really expensive paid mastermind groups. Uh, Bigger Pockets has mastermind groups if you buy the intention journal. Um, the intention journal, you actually get part of a mastermind group that we put you in. Now the upside of a mastermind group is that you know, there's other people on the same journey. They're holding you accountable. They're asking you, hey man, you said you were gonna be here. You know, you were gonna analyze five deals. Why didn't you do it? Just like a performance coach was. The downside is they don't necessarily have way more experience and they don't have a lot of like, years of training in mindset and stuff. So they can't necessarily help you unlock as much. Yeah. There's great part. I love mastermind groups. I've always been part of one. Uh, I've been in probably 20 different ones over the years. And then finally, fifth is a paid course. So some people like to pay for online digital courses. I might pay 5,000 or 500 or 10,000, whatever, for a course. Again, I tend to shy away from that because that's more of the, the tactic. It's like you can read a book and get the same tactics as you would out of a $5,000 course. Now, if you like learning from courses, maybe that's the avenue for you. So anyway, that's like the five ways that I think people can kind of yeah. get more information, change their mindset, change their strategies, learn real estate and grow. So anything you want to say on that? I just think that's my, kind of like my <laughs> thoughts that's, on it. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, you know, get accountability if you can, number one, right? That's, yeah. that's number one. Um, but really, the, the, the real thing to remember is to shift mindset, it, it's not a question of how. Yeah. Even though as human beings, we're to-do list machines. So we always wonder what the strategy is. Who, who. So really, the question is who. Yes. So who do I need to become? Who do I need to let go of? Who yep. am I still acting like that is holding me back? Because it could be discomfort, like, because we could even dive into the discomfort you went through around your family. Because when you start to get on the top of the mountaintop, the next person on the mountaintop could be really far away. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it can be lonely. So, so accountability and really the decision to move will carry you there. But who do you want to become? And whatever yeah. resource that you want, find one. If you can pay for it, pay for one. If you can't find a way for it, pay for it or trade for it. Like, don't let not knowing how stay stop you from getting what you want. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that who do you want to become thing. I'm reading this book, Atomic mm -hmm. Habits. Uh, Atomic Habits by, mm -hmm. uh, shoot, can't remember his name. Anyway, it's called Atomic Habits and it's really good. But he makes this point in there that people focus so much on what they want, like the outcome, rather than their identity on who they need to become to become that way. And he makes his awesome point in there. I love that he said this and I'm going to steal this from him and say it now. He says, when you're trying to like become someone different, Think about who that person is and then ask yourself the question, what would they do? What would a healthy person eat? What would a successful real estate investor do? So we're basically yeah. modeling. You mentioned the word modeling earlier. Like if you want to yeah. model somebody yeah. else's behavior, like what would they do? So you get like, that's what, you remember the WWJD brace that's that were popular in the nineties? Like what would Jesus do? That's what the yeah. idea was. You're modeling yeah. somebody else. What yeah. would they do in this situation? Yeah. What would, what would Jason Drees do in this situation? Uh, what, yeah. you know, what would, what would yeah. So again, that's modeling that mindset I think is super helpful. <laughs> Yeah, because if you if you weigh 180 pounds and you want to weigh 150, you just have to start doing everything a 150 pound person would do. Yeah. If you if you are not a real estate investor and you are a real estate investor, want to be a real estate investor with passive cash flow of 10 grand a month, what would you do if you are a real estate investor who has passive cash flow of 10,000 a month? Yeah. Yeah. Who just doesn't have those properties right now? It's a mindset, right? Yeah. So it's who and right. And the thing is, our emotions are are the indicators of alignment. So where the negative emotion is, 
if you feel that, push through that, breathe yeah. through it, jump up and down, scream and yell, because that's usually where we stop. We shut the chair. There you go. So makes sense, man. Cool. Good stuff. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah. Should we get out of yeah. here? Tacos. Um, I've, yeah, let's get out of here. We ran over. Oh, and if anybody here wants. I've got some space on my calendar if anybody wants a free session to focus on like expanding your team. Um, or if someone, I'm gonna do a training. I think it'd be useful if I did a training, like maybe a 30, 40 minute call on how to shift your mindset. Um, so if you want that, send a text message to text uh, Coach Jason to 4747, I pasted it here. Text Coach Jason to 474747. 474747. Cool, man. Coach Jason, yeah. And that'll give you a link. You can book in a session with me. It'll put you on my, my distribution list. I'll send you a text and let you know when that training's coming so you can jump on that, right? Um, and I have coaches on my team that I work with too, so. Cool. So That's me, awesome, Evan, we, we're available. If you want to grow and expand, just give us a call. We'll give you a free session, okay? Very cool. But do something. I recommend some it, guys. From this. Don't let this just be, that it, right? That's awesome, man. Cool. Yeah, do it. I, like I said, I, if you want to model, if you want to model like successful like real estate investors, like like there's yeah, you said it's the thing to have. Almost every successful real estate investor I know has either performance coach or some kind of like mentor or you know something that's in their life that's drilling them over and over on the mindset stuff. Like most of them I know have again, yeah. they're part of huge like mastermind groups. Like I'm in part of Go Abundance. I have you as a performance coach. I do intention journal stuff every day. Like that's not an accident. I, again, I'm not successful and therefore I have time to do these things. I do these things and therefore I'm successful. And that's why I think that works that way. So yes. there we go. Yes. All right, dude. Fantastic. Well, thanks for doing this today. Cool. That was fun. All right, man. Yeah, this was fun. All right, man. All right. We'll see, see you, you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Uh, yeah, go follow Jason on Instagram. See y'all later. <laughs> right. And me, if you're not following me, at Beardy Goodbye. Branding. Come on. Bye, guys. Follow him, too. Yeah. Bye.